Well hello everybody and welcome to the Deanery. As you can see we are firmly inside today. Uh, the weather is atrocious, it's pouring with rain outside um, but it's good to welcome you as we worship together. Before we begin our service I just want to say a few words about the announcement that the government made that uh, churches may be open from the 12th of June. As I'm sure you're aware, there are some significant restrictions upon that. Uh, we're not allowed to have more than 40 people. We're not allowed to sing hymns. We have to remain at uh, two meter physical distancing. I am meeting with James and with our church officers on Monday to talk about some of the uh, results of, uh, of those restrictions. And, but we are looking to open our, our building as soon as it's safe to do so and as soon as we're able to uh, work something that uh, incorporates those restrictions. So we will keep you uh, informed. You'll have seen uh, with the new sheet that came this week that we've put out a note regarding that and asking you to uh, give us some feedback about what you might like to see uh, with regard to the use of our church building and services during this still in between uh, time of stage two and going into stage one of the easing of lockdown. So please will you uh, call James or myself or you can email us uh, and, and we look forward to hearing from you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. The scriptures proclaim that God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for the First Sunday after Trinity. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You might like to pause the video at this point to uh, look at the readings which can be found uh, in the text document that accompanies this service today. Our Old Testament reading is Genesis chapter 18 verses 1 to 15. The psalm is Psalm 116 uh, verses 10 to 17. 
Our epistle reading is Romans chapter 5 and verses 1 to 8. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness, he saw the crowds and had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out and to cure every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. These twelve Jesus sent with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You might like to pause the video now uh, in order to access the sermon which I have based on Matthew chapter 9 and 10 and you can find that from the same source as this video. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray, and in our prayers this morning, I shall be using a bidding which is, Father, by your Spirit, and please would you respond, bring in your kingdom. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. You sent your Son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to captives, and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your Spirit, rouse us to work in his name. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. And we pray especially for those who have been affected by the protests regarding the death of George Floyd. For those who feel a deep sense of injustice in our world, 
and for those who are still enslaved. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. As your Son Jesus sent the disciples, so send us into a hurting and harassed world. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to those who mourn to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. Let us pray for those who have lost loved ones in this pandemic, for those who are still unwell. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. God of mercy, you know us and love us, and hear our prayer. Keep us in the eternal fellowship of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. And we have a short moment now as we bring our own prayers before God in the quietness of this service. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son, As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal Son of Heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hello everybody, it's very good to welcome you to the deanery today. Uh, normally I'd like to be outside for uh, my sermon but it's absolutely pouring with rain and there's a gale force 5 wind outside as well. So today I'm here in my dining room against the backdrop of uh, part of my mineral collection and I'm going to be speaking on Matthew chapters 9 and 10 where Jesus sends out his disciples. You know, I've been a Christian for as long as I can remember, but certainly a good 50 years. And I've been ordained in the Church of England for more than 30 years. And I must have heard that list of the names of the disciples from Matthew's Gospel hundreds of times over those years. And you know, it's really easy to skip the list of names of the disciples, a bit like not bothering to read the genealogy at the beginning of Matthew's Gospel. I mean, who bothers to read that? Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begat, begat Judah and his brothers, and so on. But I've never noticed until I sat down this week to prepare this sermon the significance of one of the disciples, and that is Simon the Zealot. Now, although I can't see your faces as I preach this, I suspect you have probably never noticed the significance either. Simon the Zealot. Matthew actually draws attention to the title. He could have just called him Simon, or Simon not the fisherman, or whatever other trait he had. But he emphasises that he was a zealot. And the zealots were a political group who rebelled against the Roman occupation, but they did it with a passion. If you know your history, uh, after Jesus' death, there was the siege of Masada when 1,500 zealots, known as Sicarii, committed suicide rather than give in to Roman rule. You'll know how strong their beliefs were. They were called Sicarii because that's the word for a dagger, which was the weapon of their choice. If you've ever visited Gamla in Israel, where hundreds of zealots threw themselves off a parapet on a hilltop fortress, rather than surrender to the Romans, you will understand something of their passion. Simon the Zealot, came from a village just down the road from Gamla. They were fanatical in their belief that Israel should be free of the oppressors and anyone who had any dealings with the Romans or who they considered to have sold themselves into the hands of the country's oppressors for personal gain or as a collaborator was the enemy. 
And I can still hear you thinking now, so what's this got to do with anything? Well, think again. Who wrote the gospel that I've uh, been quoting from this morning that we heard? It was Matthew. What was Matthew? He was a tax collector for the Romans. If Simon the Zealot had met Matthew the tax collector anywhere else other than in the company of Jesus, he would probably have stuck a Sicari in his back given the opportunity. And what that list of disciples' names tells us is the truth that those who may hate each other in the world can learn to love each other when Jesus Christ is at the centre of their being and their lives. And of course that should be speaking to us right now as we look out at our world hurting so much. And I believe Jesus chose those 12 men for just that reason. It was a real cross-section of society and it made a statement. He had poor disciples, he had wealthy disciples, he had married and single men, educated and uneducated, former colonialist collaborators and passionate patriots. And he drew them together with a common purpose to show that there was something about following him that put those differences aside, something that brought them together in fellowship, in a sense of belonging, in mutual love. In fact, in many ways, as Jesus sends them out, his disciples wouldn't really have needed to preach the gospel at all with words. The fact that they had come together like this spoke volumes about Jesus. And as he sends them out to proclaim that the kingdom of God is near, People would have seen it in the way these men began to relate to each other and the change in their lives that Jesus had wrought in them. And when Jesus looked at the crowds, Matthew tells us that he had compassion on them because they were harassed, interesting word, and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Now what you've got to understand here uh, is what Matthew is actually saying because it was the Pharisees and the religious teachers who were supposed to be the shepherds of the faith, guiding the people, caring for them and feeding them with God's word. But what we see in Matthew's gospel from the lips of Jesus is that that just wasn't happening. The priests and the teachers of the law had very little to offer. The pillars of religion had become the caterpillars of religion, if you like, just feeding on themselves. And those leaders who were supposed to be helping and loving and supporting uh, and, and helping people to belong were instead engaged in theological argument with each other over subtle nuances of the law. And it had become about themselves and about excluding others. Friends, after 11 weeks of lockdown, we are beginning to see the easing of restrictions on us as an island community and, and as a church community too. James and I, together with our church officers, will be looking at what that's going to mean for us as we look to open our church building again. But we need to be purposeful and careful as we do so. As you know, there's still a lot of restrictions in place, so please be patient as we work towards that. But the danger will be that we will simply want everything to be as it was in life, in community, in church. But it won't be. Many lives have been completely tipped upside down by what has happened. When Jesus looked at the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Well, in my view, that's a pretty good description of what the world looks like at the moment. In many ways it is harassed and helpless. So as we look ahead, it's really important to recognise and remember some of the essentials about what it means to be a disciple in these difficult times. And we need to think about how that's going to play out in our lives and attitudes, in our, our actions and our community. What message will we as Christians take out as our community opens up again because it's an extraordinary opportunity. For example, this reading reminds us that unity of purpose is essential. We aren't just here to serve ourselves and engage in theological argument to the exclusion of others. We are called to express unity. 
Now, in a world at the moment that's being torn apart by racism, it's critical that we set a good example. You know, if Matthew the tax collector and Simon the zealot can come together in Christ, then we can express that unity too. As I've talked to people, many of them have said that one of the ironies of the COVID-19 pandemic has been that although we have been physically separated, somehow we have come together more. As a church across the island in the last 11 weeks, I've worked much more closely with ecumenical colleagues. I've talked with my own family more. Now my hope is that as we ease out of lockdown, we'll have a greater appreciation of the people around us and what they do for us and a greater appreciation for each other as disciples. My hope is that we will think more of others and less of ourselves and what we want and that together we will be sent out by Jesus and not to hide within. As disciples we're called to be compassionate too. This is a pattern for all disciples of Jesus. People are harassed, frightened, impatient, anxious, uneasy about the future. We have an opportunity to speak into that at the most fundamental level as Christians in daily conversation. James in his talk last week uh, talked about us being good news. Well how can you as an individual, how can we as a church emerging from this crisis be good news? We need to think about that. And as the disciples were sent out, we're also called to be outward looking. We're called to be fruitful, to bring healing, to drive out evil and to give freely and generously. I could go on. Matthew the tax collector and Simon the zealot, two very different people, but who work together to proclaim the word and works of God in Jesus Christ. Please think in these coming days what it means for you to be a, a disciple of Jesus. The same Jesus who said, freely you have received, freely give. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, as we reflect on this reading from Matthew, we pray that you will help us to be the kind of disciples you call us to be, that we are to follow the pattern of Jesus' life, to be compassionate, to look out with care, to be good news to the people around us and to draw people together in unity. Help us, Lord, in these coming days as we reflect on what it will mean for us here at Town Church to go back into our building. Help us, Lord, to be missional people, to look outwards, to proclaim the kingdom of heaven and to freely give as we have freely received from you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.